Okay, hopefully everyone can see my screen. Welcome to our webinar today. My name is Jamie Schenker Passero, Associate Director of the Temple Small Business Development Center. We are running this webinar to introduce you to some alternative local sources of funding. We know that this is an extremely challenging time as many of your businesses have been closed and we wanted to bring some local lenders to speak to you about the services that they offer. And that's me. And this is the agenda for today. And I do want to jump into it um, to be conscious of everyone's schedule. We will be hearing first from Karen from the Philadelphia Department of Commerce. We'll be hearing from Mary Soldano, oops, sorry about the typo, from Work, then Bob from Interface Capital, and then Tapilton from Honeycomb Capital. So I want to uh, stop sharing my screen to allow Karen from Commerce to share hers with you. Right. Hi, everyone. Um, Karen Fegley. I'm Deputy Commerce Director for the City of Philadelphia. Um, thanks so much for Temple, to Temple SBDC for, for hosting this and inviting me. Um, and it's great that Honeycomb and Work and Interface are here to tell you about their tools. Um, we recognize that businesses um, around the country, but certainly here in our City of Philadelphia, are very impacted by COVID-19. And um, this is an unprecedented crisis, and we need everyone to pitch in and um, all tools on the table. So um, I wanted to take a few minutes just to make sure everyone is aware of uh, the business relief program that the city launched on Monday. Um, we created a program to help small businesses stay in business during this immediate crisis, um, hopefully to help you enable you to, to pay your employees when possible and to avoid predatory lending and, and just make sure you can kind of keep things open. Uh, um, what we've got is the COVID-19 Small Business Relief Fund. So first, I just want to show you on this page here, if you go to philadelphia.gov backslash commerce, you come up to our Commerce Department page, and there are resources here I wanted to show everyone. So if you um, slide down here, here's a link to the, the fund right there. But I also wanted to take you down the page. Unfortunately, it's it's a little down. But down here in posts, there's like all the recent posts that are coming from the city about different information that, that relate to businesses. There's a whole nother COVID page for all the health relate, related information. And if you go to see all posts, um, there is a resource page that we are keeping updated. So information and resources for businesses impacted by COVID-19. We are um, doing our best to add resources to this page. Um, obviously we know financial assistance is top of everyone's mind. And so that's here, but there are also some other um, some other information on utilities and other resources. So in financial assistance, the first one up is our uh, small business program that we launched on Monday. So what we have is a three-tiered program. There is one application. You only have to fill out one application, but the, what we're offering is tiered based on the size of the business, the size of a business's revenue. Um, for for businesses that make less than $500,000 a year in annual revenue, they are eligible to apply for a micro enterprise grant of $5,000. And we've tried to make this the least um, sort of burdensome as far as the application goes. Um, uh, you know, you just have to be able to document what your revenue is and answer a bunch of some other questions about your business and your employees. Um, the next step is a for businesses that make annual revenue between 500,000 and 3 million. And those businesses are eligible for a small business grant of up to $25,000. And the amount will be determined based on the information provided as far as your costs and the impact that this um, has had on, on your business so far. Um, there, then for businesses that are a little larger, between 3 million and 5 million, we're offering a small business zero interest loan of up to $100,000. And again, the amount will be determined um, on a based on an analysis of your application. Um, we are, you can apply for everyone right here, clicking on the apply for the program now. We have the application available in English, Spanish, and Mandarin Chinese. Um, we're reviewing applications on a rolling basis, and we hope to make awards uh, every week. Um, 
the review committee is considering the following priorities. Uh, the number of jobs that the business sustains, both during a normal business cycle, sort of pre-COVID, and then also if um, you're, you're being able to maintain any uh, your employees right now. Um, we're also reviewing the, the impact to your revenue, how you're able to demonstrate how this has impacted uh, your revenue to date and also sort of projected. Um, we are looking for businesses that provide low jobs to low income individuals and or is located in a low income zip code. Um, there's some priority for that. Um, and for sole proprietors, one of the questions we're getting a lot, I wanted to go just hit a couple of the big questions we're getting. For sole proprietors, independent contractors, um, they are eligible to, to apply. Priority will be given to those who are located in zip codes with high poverty and or those that sustain multiple subcontractors during a normal business cycle. So um, for any business that has sole proprietors or 1099s um, that you work with, you wouldn't list those as employees, but there are two boxes where you talk about the, the impact on your business. And that's where you would want to explain um, how the people that depend on you are still, you know, are being impacted by this. Um, uploads, we do ask for uploads with every application. There's two forms we provide, uh, an ACH form, which allows us to do a direct deposit for those who are awarded and um, a W-9 form. And then also a, you need to upload your taxes. For businesses that are new and don't have signed tax returns, you still have to upload something, but we are trying to you know, ask people to be creative about what else can document their annual revenue. So a profit and loss statement or um, a quarterly tax estimate or something like that can, we encourage you to do that. Um, and we've tried to make the uploads easy too. You can just take a picture of something with your phone and upload it as a PDF or a, a, or a picture file. Um, we have a total, we're, we've launched the program with $9.25 million. Um, we anticipate um, weighing this heavily on the micro grants, um, the $5,000 grants. Uh, that's certainly the most applications we're getting now. And that will probably be um, the highest number of recipients, uh, you know, in each of the three categories. Um, but overall, we're just going to do the best we can. We will tweak things as we go and communicate um, everything on this website. And um, we are open to working with our partners to try to figure out, you know, the best way to serve, serve all of your small businesses so that you can keep doing what you do. Um, we are all in this together. So I'll stop there for now. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Karen. Can we do a few quick questions? Do you have time for that? Sure. Okay. There are a lot of questions coming in regarding location. Um, so can you just be really clear about exactly where a business needs to be located? Businesses, this is for businesses that are in the city of Philadelphia only. Okay. Um, nonprofits are excluded from this, correct? So that's a great question. Um, if, if your nonprofit sort of runs like a business, if your nonprofit is dependent on, um, on customers, on, you know, sales to retail sales or ticket sales or something like that, then you can apply. You should apply. Um, in, there is one part in the application where it asks you to pick your, um, your business structure and nonprofit is not an option. So you can pick any, I, I've been telling people just to click C Corp and then indicate somewhere else in there that they are a nonprofit. But yeah, we, we would like, but if you're a nonprofit that is, um, relies on grants, I think it would be harder to document your loss that would, in a way that would make you competitive for this program. Okay, thank you. Um, let me see, uh, is there a deadline to apply? Um, no, uh, not currently, but I can tell you that um, applications are coming in fast and furious. And so I we can only imagine. To, yeah, exactly. Get your, you know, take a look at the application and get your paperwork together and try to get it in as quickly as possible. Um, um, there's also some help at our, we have a hotline. Um, our business service managers are, are working on phone and an email business. You can email business at phila.gov or call 215-683-2100. Um, um, and there's also a bunch of providers like the folks on the phone today, like Temple, SBDC and, and work, et cetera, who are available to help, um, businesses, um, you know, just get, get their things together and, and fill out the application. Um, okay. 
And there's, how are you defining being located in Philadelphia? Because we're still getting a lot of questions about that. Is it that you're paying Philadelphia city taxes? Is that really kind of the, the... So no, the, your business address actually needs to be in Philadelphia. This program is for businesses located in Philadelphia. So your, whatever your business address is that's on your city taxes um, is, is what you would want to show. Okay. Um, and if they have further questions, where is the best place for them to address that? Uh, I would suggest emailing business at philadelphia.gov. Okay, per perfect. And we will be posting an FAQ shortly, a frequently asked questions on the um, on this same web page. Um, it just keeps getting updated with more questions, but yeah, <laughs> questions of course, and answers, of but, course. but no, that, that will be posted very shortly and be yeah. available. But please email us anytime. That makes sense. Okay. All right, Karen. Um, I think I think we want to be mindful of your time. I know you have another obligation. There are more questions, but I will direct them to um, to that email address that you mentioned. So thank you so much. We really appreciate you speaking with us today. You're very welcome. Thanks, guys. Good luck. Okay. Uh, now there are a lot of questions about resources if you have a business outside Philadelphia. And I didn't mention this in the chat, but I will repeat it. Our other presenters today are going to be speaking about their services, which would apply to you as a business located outside of Philadelphia. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to direct the floor to Mary. So Mary from work, would you want to share your screen now? I'm going to unmute you. Yes, I can do that now. Okay, great. Mary. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Mary Soldano. I am the Director of Lending and Operations at Women's Opportunities Resource Center. We, oh, let me figure out this. We are all figuring out Zoom for the first time together. Okay, so we are a nonprofit that is located in Philadelphia, but as Jamie said, we do serve the surrounding counties. So that includes Montgomery County, Chester County, Bucks, Delaware, and also Camden County in New Jersey. We offer three main streams of programming. We have a self-employment training. We have microloans that start as small as a $150 credit builder loan, goes up to $50,000, and then also up to $250,000 for the SBA Community Advantage Loan, and that's to help individuals purchase their real estate that they are operating out of. In addition, we also have family savings accounts in partnership with the United Way. And in that program, um, we hope to have some slots opening up very soon where you can save for your first time home purchase, a business, um, or at your yourself or your child's education. So really cool stuff. Um, specifically, I'm going to skip, this is my normal, you know, WRC overview. I'm going to skip some of this stuff because we're all very interested to hear about the funding that is available. Um, and so right now we are making a strategic effort to help all of our existing clients um, and also any businesses who may be applying for the SBA Disaster Loan Relief Program. Um, as Karen said earlier, we also help out with applying for the City of Philadelphia grant, which we've already helped a few clients um, fill out for. Um, our step, we do have a step lending approach. And so, like I mentioned earlier, we start with $150 credit builder if you are um, like credit invisible. But we do go up to $50,000 for small businesses. And so those loans can be used for anything of inventory, working capital, payroll, um, business equipment, et cetera. Um, all of those things that, you know, people need inside of COVID-19 and also during um, this process right now. Um, SBA Community Advantage Loan, and I'm not sure how much of this is going to be happening right now in this uh, climate, but if you are interested in purchasing the building that you're operating out of or the building that you are going to operate out of, we would love to help you do that. Um, we are having a business continuity series starting this Monday, um, and I think Jamie is going to be sharing all of our information um, after this webinar here. So if you are interested, please reach out to me and I can get you signed up for that. The four sessions are all listed on the screen. Um, on Monday, we're going to be talking about how to adapt your business model in the midst of COVID-19. So there's a lot of businesses right now where you are not 
supposed to be operating um, if you're not a life sustaining business. And so how can we adapt your business model to be more online or do if you're a shop more takeout and delivery services, those types of things. Um, the next session will be on April 1st, which also the city of Philadelphia will be um, there talking about. Hopefully we'll know some more information about the SBA disaster relief loans that day as well to share with you all. Um, the third session will be Monday, April 6th, where we're going to dive deep into cash flow management and managing your cash flow on a reduced budget, which we're all seeing right now. Um, and then finally, optimizing your online presence and social media. And so I know we're very interested in all of the funding. And so we have decided we may be able to help with some bridge loans. While if you apply for the SBA Disaster Relief Fund, and if you need any information about that, I'm not sure if anyone is presenting on that today, but our loan officers would be more than happy to walk you through that application and possibly help you with a bridge loan in between getting those funds. We um, do we actually have, help. sorry, just really quick. We do oh, have a, okay. a pre-recorded webinar that we did last week on the SBA disaster loan. So we can send that out in the email along with all the resources that our panelists mentioned. Awesome, great, thanks Jamie. And so that's a big thing, everyone. Um, there's a little ambiguity about when that's gonna, when you would actually get those funds. And so we at WRC would be more than happy to help you with a bridge loan in between those timing. Um, like Karen mentioned earlier, and we are so impressed with the city of Philadelphia and how quickly they came together to put together the COVID-19 uh, relief fund. If you need any assistance actually applying for that, please let us know. Um, and then we also just recently started an emergency savings program. Um, looking back, I wish we had started this like a few years ago so that uh, people going through this right now would have those emergency funds set up. But now is as good a time as any to enroll into that program if you're interested in setting up an emergency savings fund. And so who to contact? So if you need more info on the webinar series that we're starting to host next week, you can contact myself for information on any of our loans. Um, our loan officer, Mark, all of the contact information is on this screen right here, which I'll make sure Jamie gets this PowerPoint to share out. Um, emergency savings program, reach out to Camille and any assistance in applying for the SBA disaster loans or the city um, of Philadelphia Relief Fund, you can reach out to any of our technical assistance team members listed on here. Um, yeah, so that is my presentation. I would love to answer any questions. From folks oh, we have, have them. <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> <laughs> um, first question, is work only for women? No, so I probably should have started with that. Very <laughs> misleading. Our mission is to serve women um, and their families, but we can serve men businesses as well. So if you are a male-owned business in need, um, you're more than welcome to reach out to us. Excellent. And what is the size range of the bridge loans? So that all depends on your business. So like I mentioned earlier, our micro loans only go up to 50000 So that would be our max. It also kind of depends on what your business is going through and um, what your application for SBA looked like. Um, so we're gonna be reviewing that on a case-by-case -case basis. Sorry, I don't have more detailed info about that. No, that's fair. And can you repeat the counties that you cover? There's somebody in Northampton, um, somebody else in Montgomery. Um, mm -hmm. Can you repeat the counties that you cover again? Yeah, so we do Philadelphia and the surrounding counties. So Philadelphia County, Chester County, Montgomery County, Bucks and Delaware, and then also Camden County in New Jersey. Okay, all right, that's good to know. Let me see uh, a question on the interest rates. Are you able to speak to that at all? Mm -hmm. So right now our interest rate is fixed at 8% for all of our loans. Um, however, we are working on a product to lower that um, in the midst of COVID-19. Okay. Center County, is that Center County or Northampton? Are those ones that you cover? What county is Northampton in? Mm -hmm. I think uh, the panelist says Northampton County, so I'm assuming that is it. No. So unfortunately, mm -hmm. no, but we would be able to find an, another CDFI that serves that county. So if you're in need of services, right. please reach out and I can look that up for you. Right. And just a general comment, uh, we, we will mm -hmm. have more people speak today um, who likely will apply to where you're located. Um, and we, we also have in our resource list um, other CDFIs that you can connect with. Uh, we just, obviously this is, this is a small sample, but we just wanted to bring in a few. So if you have specific questions um, location-wise, let's, let's hold those for now and uh, we'll, we'll get you resources. 
Okay. Okay. I think that answers most of the repeating questions that I'm seeing. So let's let's give the screen over to Bob from Interface. Bob, I'm going to unmute you. Unmute. There we go. Great. We can't hear you yet, Bob, so you may need to unmute yourself. Sorry. Can you there we go. There, there we, we go. go. there we go. Thanks. Yeah, welcome everybody. It's Bob Clark. I'm with a company called Interface Financial Group. Uh, we're a little bit unique. We're an alternative funding company. Uh, we're not a lender. So we're not giving out loans. What we're doing is we provide short-term working capital for small businesses. We work all across the U.S. We're not limited just to the Philadelphia area, although I happen to run the office that's in this part of the country. So what we do is work with companies that are tight on cash flow. Uh, we can work with any B2B businesses. That's important. So in other words, if your business invoices another company for your product or service, we can work with you. We are not able to, to work with retail companies and you'll see why in a moment here. So uh, what we do is look for companies that need to receive funding more quickly from their customers. So let's say as an example, you're a contractor, you have work outstanding, you've invoiced uh, your customer for that, but they don't know when they're going to be able to pay. What we do is we purchase individual invoices from you one at a time that you have sent out to your customers we give you the funds for those invoices right away, then we wait to get paid 30, 60, 90, whatever it takes, you know, from your customer. So uh, there's no long-term commitment. It's literally one invoice at a time or more if you choose to do that. So it's very flexible. Um, we can do small amounts. We can do, you know, invoices or groups of invoices as small as $10,000. There's really no upper limit on that. Um, and it, it can work for any, I'll mention it again, any B2B business. So it can be a manufacturer, a distributor, a service provider, a contractor. We work heavily in construction. We're very uh, familiar with that. It does not depend on your credit score. Uh, it really depends more on the credit worthiness of your customer because they're the ones that are going to pay us. So the screen you're looking at here now is just kind of how the process works. And uh, what I'll do is give Jamie the link to our website so that you can get on and, and experience more of the details of this. But uh, basically, as soon as you invoice your customer, you can notify us, or maybe you've already invoiced them. Uh, we can then go and purchase that invoice from you. We're able to advance up front 80% of the invoice value to you. Uh, we do charge a fee that amounts to on the order of a few percent. Uh, and we would withhold that at the end when we receive payment, total payment for your invoice and refund the rest of the 20% uh, to you at that point. So uh, I'll just say it's, it's a relatively quick process. Uh, we're not lending, so there's not the, you know, inches and inches of paperwork that need to be done. Uh, you're basically going to be sending us your most recent financial statements. Uh, and then with that, we're able to qualify you in our system. You can then begin in sending invoices in. Uh, generally speaking, it's fairly uh, speedy process. Uh, usually the first time through, it might take a week uh, to get everything set up. But following that, if you send in invoices, generally we can turn them around within a couple of days. Now I'm saying all that because that's our normal turnaround time. Uh, but given the current state of affairs and the fact that in our entire company is working remotely, it will probably take a little bit longer than that. Uh, but it doesn't take a lot of time more than that. So uh, I guess what I'd say is that Maybe I'll just open it up for questions again, just to mention yeah. this is different, you know, so it's, it's not the normal thing you'd look at. So, uh, so there are some questions uh, about the interest rate and fees. Yes. Okay. So first off, there are no fees, zero fees. You hear that uh, everyone? No fees. <laughs> no fees. We, we, we purchased the invoice at a discount. 
Now, how much is that discount? Uh, the discount is 2%, flat 2%, plus 0.8% per month that we have to wait for the funds to come in. That's for any business except for construction. For construction, it's a little bit more. It's 2% plus 1% per month. So let's say you're a subcontractor and you have an invoice and we get paid in 30 days. You'd pay two plus one or 3%. If it was 45 days, it'd be three and a half percent, et cetera. There are no other fees. It's very simple to calculate what the cost is. Okay, and can you review what territories you cover? Oh, we cover the entire United States. So I, mean, I happen to run the office that's in the greater Philadelphia area, right. but we can handle deals anywhere in the U.S. In fact, we're in eight different countries. So we're, we're, we've been around for 45 years. So. Um, is this considered factoring? It is. It's, a, it's kind of a subset of factoring. It's called spot factoring. Uh, factoring means purchasing accounts receivable or purchasing invoices. What we do is called spot factoring because we only require one invoice at a time. Most right. factors will want to take over all of your invoices, sign you up for a year, have minimums, that sort of thing. We, we don't do that. We're kind of tailored for small businesses. Perfect. Uh, someone was wondering if there was a discount rate for government contracts. No, it's the same. It's what I just described. Okay. All right. Got it. So, uh, uh, uh. one question overseas invoices that's correct right depends on the country i'm guessing it depends on the country yeah and and whoever the, the asked the question can feel free to contact me and i'll again perfect. i'll send out my email and my phone but it, we're in eight different countries as long as your customer is in one of those eight countries we're fine okay perfect and what happens if the invoice is never paid well generally what we do if it, if it gets delayed we go back to you we 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 almost never would talk to your customer uh, we want you to try to work it out with them at the end of the day we do need to get paid so we, we do call this a full recourse uh, model so we're, i mean we're going to be looking to you to make good on that but generally speaking uh, we swap out for another one of your better invoices and let you work it out with the customer where there's an issue okay um, commercial and residential uh, uh, again, rental for rental or for construction what was the I, i'm seeing both questions actually yeah i mean we can't we don't do real estate right so i mean we're, we're doing invoices that your company would send to your customer's company so if you're a contractor uh we can only do your commercial jobs because you're invoicing a, a company we can't do residential because you're invoicing a homeowner okay um Mm -mm -mm. So one that we have a question that says I'm a general I'm a general contractor. Is that two percent or one percent? Does that come out of the twenty percent you hold back until payment? Yes, it does. So we advance eighty percent up front, and then once we collect the entire invoice, let's say it is our fee is three percent, we would send the, the other seventeen percent back to you. And in terms of uh, commercial and residential uh, builders. Well, again, if you're, let's say you're a subcontractor working for a builder, a home yeah. builder, that's fine. Uh, if you're- It can be residential. Right, if you're doing okay. work directly for a homeowner, we can't do that. We, we can't chase down homeowners for payment, you understand? What is the percentage of loan to billing? I think that's just that, fa that flat 2%, right? Right, and we advance 80% of the, of the invoice face value of the invoice. For contractors, that does not include retaining. So in other words, it's just what, you expect to collect from your customer. Okay, okay, good. I think that answers all of the questions that I'm seeing. Uh, do you finance imports? Well, I mean, again, if you're, let's say you're a distributor of imported goods and you're bringing goods into the country and then you're reselling them domestically, as long as your customer is in the US or one of those eight countries we service, we can do it. Okay. Um, Monthly fee? No, there is no monthly fee. It's a 2% flat interest rate. Right, 2% 2 um, 2 base fee and then either 0.8 or 1% per month, depending on your industry. There's no other fee. There are right. others. Very simple. Will it work in the inverse, paying a contractor invoice on our behalf? I don't think so, right? No. Yeah. No, we, we, we work directly with you. Right, right. 
Okay. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. So. Yeah, feel free to reach out. Like you said, I'll, I'll send out my email and everything and right. happy to get into more discussions. Right. So, th I mean, think about it. You have a delay in getting paid. This is where interface comes in. Simple as that. Right. How high does your lending go? Um, well, again, we're not lending, but we, yeah. we call it funding. Our, we can go up into the millions of dollars. I mean, that's, that's not... For the anything. invoice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. And we could also work with businesses once we get out of this COVID-19 that are growing rapidly and maybe their existing bank or whatever can't keep up as far as raising their line of credit. Uh, we could work with a growing company too, not just one that's in trouble. So. Right. Perfect. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the, service, the services from Interface are available not only in times of crisis and, and, and it's really a great service for, for certain industries. Uh, so we really appreciate hearing about this. I'm sure this was enlightening for a lot of our attendees. Um, okay, so I think we have gotten through all the questions and we can now turn the screen over to Honeycomb. All right, uh, if you could stop sharing, Bob, that'd be great. And oh, I, can, over here. I did that, there you go. Oh, thank you. <laughs> great, so let's get set up here. Yep, I see your screen, excellent. Awesome. Cool screen. Okay, that's not what I meant to do. Great. So thank you for coming to this webinar, folks. I know it's a really, really crazy time. So what we're basically going to go through is we're going to talk about uh, investment crowdfunding and what it can bring to the table in, in these tough times. But before we, we get to that point, I want to introduce you to, to the basic concept, and then we're going to talk about our relief loan product. So to introduce you to the concept, I'm going to talk about Naomi. Naomi is the owner of the Pittsburgh Juice Company. She needs $35,000 to purchase a juice delivery truck because she's growing and you know she's got orders that she wants to fulfill. You know Most banks aren't really lending in that $35,000 space. They're lending a little bit north of that, but it's also more money than she might have in her bank account. So she checks out her other options and she finds that not all of them are great fits. She could go the regular crowdfunding route, doing an Indiegogo or a GoFundMe, but she doesn't want to ask for, for charity. Uh, she could go to you know, a, a smaller micro lender, but it might not get her to the full 35 she needs. Or she could go to one of these online lenders that can give you the cash tomorrow, but at pretty high rates. And she read the fine print. She didn't want to go down that route. Or she can go to a bank, but as I said, most banks aren't really looking to lend at, at these small amounts. So Naomi had nowhere to turn, and that's kind of where, where we came in. We're, we're that middle ground solution. We are a investment crowdfunding website that lets businesses like the Pittsburgh Juice Company borrow funds from their customers, their neighbors, their community members, uh, or even just strangers on the internet, folks who want to put their money outside of the stock market right now and want to put it on Main Street, both because they see that Main Street has a lot of potential, but also because they, they believe in the power of Main Street businesses. So that's essentially what our service is. We are an investment crowdfunding platform where business owners like you can borrow from anyone in the United States. And just to be clear, we're a national platform so we're able to work with businesses all over the Commonwealth. So, you know, if you're in Pittsburgh or Central PA, we're, we're also glad to work with you. So Naomi worked with us and we were able to help her business raise the funds. Here's the juice truck she bought. And she not only got the funds to get this truck, she got media exposure as she was bringing a new opportunity to, to the market. She got new customers that you know, want to kick the tires on the product, maybe order in or buy some of that juice so that, you know, they could see if this is a good investment, something they want to put a uh, hundred or a thousand dollars into. She got increased sales as a result. And by the end of her campaign, she got 67 investors that were committed to her success that would only get the repayment if that business continued to be viable. So it really is more about than just the money in investment crowdfunding. It's about creating and solidifying a supportive network around your business that can 
sure, help you grow into a larger business, but can also insulate you from tough spots, such as the one we're going through right now. So this is basically what uh, we're bringing to the table to, to the ecosystem. We are giving businesses fair expansion or relief capital with no equity dilution. You're not selling off a part of the company in this tough spot, but you're also generating buzz for, for either growth projects or for, um, you know, uh, relief projects. Your investors, they get to invest $100 or more in their favorite local businesses. Once again, these are loan investments. And, and we'll talk about the terms a little bit later. They're pretty generous for a relief product right now. And they also get the feeling that they're participating in, in your success, in your growth, and they feel like they're putting their capital to work in Main Street businesses. And of course, your community gets to benefit by having healthier businesses. You get to know more of your customers and you get to build a long-term relationship with them. So that brings me to our, our investment crowdfunding product for, for this current situation. Um, we have created a honeycomb relief loan product where businesses can borrow between $10,000 and $50,000 from their fans and community members. Now, I know that some of you might be thinking that that all sounds great, but I have to pay it back. Why don't I go with a regular crowdfunding product on GoFundMe? Well, well the issue there is that when people are donating, they are less likely to cut you a $100 check or a $1,000 check. But when they're investing in the long-term success of your business, they're able to lend at higher amounts that can actually help you get out of this cash crunch, or at least be a part of your cash flow strategy for the next couple of months. So what we're bringing to the table is a ten dollars to $50,000 loan that offers two things. First, short-term relief. There is a 45-day payment-free period, full grace period, and then there is a six-month interest-only period on three-year loans. So, you know, if you were to borrow $50,000, that comes out to about $127 that you'd be paying um, in, you know, in the next six months, uh, every month. So, you know, the, these are accessible loans that are sensitive to the current situation. But it's also a long-term marketing investment, right? This is your chance to, you know, instead of just worrying about what you're going to do the next couple of weeks, you can actually start sharing your story with your community and get them to galvanize their support around your business. And by the end of this, you can emerge stronger than ever. So where does this fit into your COVID-19 plan? Because I know there's a lot of resources out there and we absolutely recommend Honeycomb not being your only resource, right? Community investment is a very new model. We think it can help but there are some great resources out there that if you're eligible for them, we absolutely recommend applying for them as well. So I, I think that the way business owners I've been talking to have been thinking about it was there's the things that they want to get done in the short term, like applying for grants and local funds, you know, they're relatively fast processes, easy applications to turn in, not as confusing as an SBA loan. And they're also time sensitive. So, so you want to make sure you get those in very quickly. Then there's, you know, the, the SBA loan application it takes a little bit longer to get those documents together. I've been hearing six to eight weeks in, uh, in time for it to be processed. I was just at a Pittsburgh SBDC meeting and that's what the folks at the SBA over there were telling me. So I would absolutely make sure that you have something that can get you some cash a little bit earlier than that. And I think that's where Honeycomb comes in. This is a good opportunity to galvanize that community, get some cash in the door in as little as 30 days, and also you know, benefit from the, the gracious terms we have. And also, you know, if you do get an SBA loan and things do clear up, you can always refinance a Honeycomb credit loan. There's no prepayment policy. So very quickly, if you want to learn more about Honeycomb, uh, here's how the process works in a nutshell. You chat with our team, you complete a credit analysis application. We get back to you in 24 hours. Uh, if it's approved, you know, we'll, we'll give you a term sheet, maybe multiple ones, and you get to pick the one that makes the most sense for your business and for your investors. After that, we'll work together on helping you create a campaign page. We'll help you tell your story. We've run over 50 of these campaigns before. So we know what messages resonate with people and how we can get some investment into your business. 
we launched the campaign. Here's the Pittsburgh Juice Company's campaign. Um, we have an, an about 85% success rate with this funding model. So uh, while we are running that campaign, you know, you're telling your friends, family, and customers, you're sharing the campaign on social media, and we're also providing you know, our press and media uh, toolkit, our one-on-one -on -one communications with a client success team. And we're also connecting you to our network of local investors. We have about a thousand local investors who have uh, already lent to small businesses and are really, really, really passionate about investing in Main Street businesses. So the types of business down because they're trying to get me to come down and speak at uh, hey Bob, could you uh, meet yourself, please? Oh, I apologize. Oh, no worries. <laughs> um, it. Sorry. Great. Uh, so the types of businesses we work with are typically businesses that have some sort of touch point with their community, right? You know, if you're an accounting firm that you know kind of just works kind of in in a silo somewhere, investment crowdfunding might not be a good fit for you. But if you if you're a salon, a gym. Um, maybe even an auto shop or absolutely a restaurant or a brewery, this could be a good way to galvanize support uh, and get investors committed to your business to help you out. Uh, businesses that are a good fit for Honeycomb have at least six months of operating history, have a dedicated loyal following, they have folks in their network that they can talk about this opportunity with, and are looking for somewhere between $10,000 and $100,000. So, my pitch to you is in these tough times, make sure that you think about how your community can be one of your biggest assets and how you can turn this moment from one of negativity to one that's actually building your brand and helping you come out stronger on the other side. If you want to reach out, you can feel free to shoot me a text, email me, or visit honeycombcredit.com relief to learn more. There you can learn about two loan products we have and you, know, you can see where you might fit uh, in terms of interest rates, as well as you know, other terms. Uh, really quickly, I also wanted to share some resources um, that kind of just came to my desk a couple hours ago. GoFundMe launched a small business relief initiative. If you're able to raise $500 in donations, they are working alongside Yelp to match those $500. So, you know, it, it's not going to move the needle too much right now, but if that's something you wanna pursue, that's also something I would recommend. And um, you, know, you can always turn those GoFundMe donations into Honeycomb investors. And then my team has also put together a Philadelphia guide for small business resources. So you can take a look at that as well. And I think Jamie will be sending out the decks. So if you wanna click on these links, um, that will be your opportunity to do so. Happy to take any questions. Yeah, excellent. Okay, so just to reiterate, we will be sending out the presentations. We will be sending out contact information. Uh, one question, during the 45-day period, are you compounding interest the whole time, and what happens if you pay it sooner? So we are not compounding interest. It is a okay. complete grace period. Uh, if you pay it sooner, there is absolutely no problem. Um, just I think the investors would be very happy that they have helped you out of a tough spot. Totally. Uh, when and how do investors get repaid for the loan? How does that work? Yes, so um, investors would be, so the relief loan product is a three-year product. Every three months, investors get paid back three monthly payments that you have made. So, you know, it's kind of like a typical mortgage you're paying uh, every month. And then every three months, they get uh, their percentage dispersed to them. Um, until the loan is fully repaid. Perfect. Any other questions for Honeycomb? I'm not, not seeing any more, but that's fine. Hopefully that was made sense to everyone. Okay. Well, then what I will do is share back my screen and talk about what's next. Thank you so much for presenting. And really thank you to all of the presenters today. I think this was really useful just to get a wide variety of other type of loan and relief services that exist now and also in the future. So let me share my screen. Oh, was there another question? Okay.
Okay, so what's next after this? Like I said, we'll be sending out the slides, recording, contact information. We'll also be sending you out a survey and we'd really appreciate your feedback as we are funded by the Small Business Administration. We're required to collect information from you. So we would appreciate if you could fill that out. Um, we also have some upcoming webinars that we wanna mention. So on the 30th, we will be launching what will likely be a series uh, for businesses who are in the tourism, hospitality, restaurant industry. So we are asking that you submit questions in advance and we'll have a discussion and go over some of your concerns with uh, faculty from the Fox School of Business. On the second, we'll be doing a webinar on cybersecurity for remote work, thinking about small businesses who may not have been prepared for all of the remote work that is being required of us right now. And on the seventh, we'll be doing a webinar in the evening in collaboration with Slice Communication on rebuilding customer relations and social media presence right now. And addition, oh, okay, yeah, there's a question about the federal stimulus. Okay, so in regards to the SBA disaster relief loans, I know there are a lot of questions about that. And there are webinars from the Pennsylvania a Cutstown office that are happening daily on that topic. So there's a link to that that we'll send out. That's at nine o'clock daily for at least the next week. So there'll be opportunity for you to hear more about the loan itself, the application process, and to ask questions. Just to give you some background around the Temple Small Business Development Center, if you're new to us, we are a nonprofit. We are part of Fox Business School and Temple University. Uh, with our funding, we're able to offer no-cost support services to help small businesses start and grow. And we do this with our training programs and we do this with one-on-one -on -one consulting. So if you need more than what our webinars have provided in terms of questions, in terms of assistance with applying for loans, that is certainly something that our office can help you with. And um, the best way to do that is to email sbdc at temple.edu. I'll pull that up on the screen in a moment. Uh, again, assistance with any of these applications or just working on your business thinking about the future and next step. So there, those are things that our business consultants can work with you individually on. Uh, we'll be sending out a resource list as well in the email. And there is that email address that I mentioned, sbdc at temple.edu. Will the presentation be sent out? Will we email all this information? Yes, we will be emailing this presentation, the slide decks from our presenters. Um, and we can also, um, send out a recording as well. We were also streaming this on Facebook Live, so hopefully that worked. <laughs> um, federal, federal stimulus package has not yet been approved. Once the details of the final package are released, we'll be able to provide additional guidance. So that was one of our consultants chiming in. So thank you for that, Carl. Um, again, thank you so much to all of our panelists. We really hope this was helpful. Um, we will keep delivering webinars to help you through this difficult time. We are here to support you however we can. If there are topics that you have not seen um, uh, for small business webinars, let me know. You can email me and we can try and put something together. We want to bring together experts to give you the information that can be as helpful to you as possible. So I think we're going to wrap up. Thank you for all the thank yous. Um, we're glad this was helpful. And um, let me know. Oh. The Facebook page. Oh, you know, to the person who asked about coming in late, we will send out a recording. Uh, oh, good question. Do we support companies outside of the Philadelphia area? Our particular office covers Philadelphia, Lower Bucks, and Lower Montgomery County. There are other SBDC offices for every other county, so there is an SBDC that will help you no matter where you are. All right, hopefully that answers all the questions. Thank you so much for joining and um, stay tuned for more.